and today I am talking to my godfather, a very important entomologist, the Dr. Edward Mockford. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is the discovery of the world's smallest insect. Uh, doctor, would you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes, I've been studying a group of insects called bark lice or sausages for many years. I began uh, studying them when I was 15 and I uh, have just never dropped them and uh, and how old are you sir more and more different kinds so there's a bigger and bigger backlog the longer I continue working on them um, some years ago uh, in about 1998 or 99 I got interested in the life history of one of these uh, bark lice, which is a species called Ecmepteryx hagenii. It's a little scaly winged creature. It looks like a very, very small moth. Scaly wings, just like a moth. Um, and it's found on tree trunks and branches all throughout eastern uh, North America up into southeastern Canada. Um, this creature is of, of interest in a number of ways. Most of its populations are parthenogenetic, that is to say they reproduce without sex. They're all females. Um, and I was very interested in uh, the fact that it forms two kinds of eggs. It forms a summer egg, uh, which the uh, early generations of, of, the, of the year uh, make, uh, which turns orange, bright, bright orange, uh, before it hatches and stays bright orange. Uh, the, in later in the season, it forms a different kind of egg, a winter egg, which turns black. And uh, that will, will survive the winter, uh, more or less, no matter how long or how rough the winter is. Uh, these eggs are laid under bark of a tree, and uh, so they'll, they'll uh, make it through the winter. Well, so... Uh, I was, I was just really discovering these facts about the egg, which in fact have, have never been published yet. Um, and I, I kept some uh, wintering eggs on my screened-in back porch in uh, central Illinois. Of course, they were going to, to be exposed to uh, winter temperatures uh, and uh, I was going to see, okay, do these black eggs really make it through the winter? Uh, about February, I think this was about February of the year uh, 1999, I decided, okay, I'm going to open one or two of these eggs and try to determine what... Uh, stage the embryos are in. Well, I opened one egg and to my surprise I did not find a bark louse embryo, but instead I found a fully developed female of a little parasitic wasp of the family Mimaridae, the, the so-called fairy flies. They're actually little wasps, not flies, but uh, that's their common name, fairy flies, because of their very small, uh, delicate looking bodies. Well, uh, here was this female. Um, she took up nearly the whole egg, so she was about half a millimeter in length. Uh, about about the size of, of an ordinary small uh, fairy fly. Uh, in addition, though, I found three 
in the same egg three tiny little creatures that looked almost like mites. I was very lucky to be able to get those very minute creatures onto microscope slides into a mounting medium and was then able to observe them carefully. It was very obvious that they were not mites, that they were insects uh, with the usual body parts, six legs, and it was also very obvious that they were males. They had sizable male genitalia showing in the uh, abdomen. Well, uh, what on earth were they? Uh, <coughs> I knew a little bit about fairy flies. Not very much. Uh, they were certainly way out of my specialty. But I knew that some of them, at any rate, had males and females that looked very much alike. So were these little creatures the males of this uh, female that I found in the same egg? Well, they must have been. Uh, on careful examination, though, they looked very different from the female. They had an antenna uh, that was essentially two segments with one big bulgy segment out, out on the, the end of a very small basal segment. And uh, uh, this big bulgy thing made, uh, made it look like they had two ears sticking out from the head. Uh, and uh, as, as a, uh, as a uh, fairy fly specialist later joked with me about it. This looked like Mickey Mouse. But they were quite real creatures. And uh, I was very puzzled. But then I, I recalled the life history of the uh, common fig wasp, which has a wingless male. And I decided, okay, this, this must fit into uh, the smaller Hymenoptera uh, sort, which, uh, some of which, at any rate, have wingless males. Um, not the only curiosity about these creatures was, was, was their winglessness, but their very small size, and also the fact that they had suction cups on the ends of their feet. Um, we didn't, uh, as far as I was aware, uh, there was no form uh, in the literature that uh, had suction cups on the ends of its feet. Wow. Um, so I got in touch with uh, the specialist on, on uh, fairy flies at the U.S. National Museum, and also uh, the, the, spe uh, the specialist at the Canadian National Museum. And uh, the latter gentleman was, was very, very helpful in uh, getting me on to the necessary literature to deal with uh, this little creature. Turns out that my find was a member of a uh, genus called Dicopomorpha, <laughs> and that there were uh, no forms of Dicopomorpha known in North America that had any males. I think there was perhaps one species known uh, in, in uh, North America, because it didn't have males in, in some respects it differed from the one I had. Uh, the other known species of Dicopomorpha were from Argentina. Uh, so there was a 
brand new form and I decided, okay, I'm going to go ahead and describe this creature. Uh, working uh, in a different group of insects is a little bit like traveling to another universe. <laughs> uh, all is different. You would think that uh, most of the uh, most of the anatomy is the same, but the fact is that all of the anatomical details are different, <laughs> and you have to do a lot of learning of new information before you can attack the uh, description of uh, of a new species. So that's what I did for a number of months, and. Uh, Got, uh, got what I thought was a pretty good description together. Uh, I sent it to uh, Dr. Huber, uh, John Huber, at the Canadian National Collection, and he very kindly uh, went over my, my paper in great detail, pointed out a number of things that I should correct or elaborate on, and I got the paper into uh, close to publishable shape. And so I decided, okay, this one should go to a, a journal that uh, has good readership, and I sent it to the Annals of the Entomological Society of America. Uh, we are uh, rather limited in uh, number of pages we can uh, have free at any rate in that journal but I was able to get the paper small enough so that I was able to publish it at uh, no cost since I am a member of that uh, organization and the paper came out in uh, I think it was the first issue of the uh, Annals of the Entomological Society in uh, the year 01. Um, I did not make the claim that these males were the smallest insect. Uh, I knew that they must be close to the smallest size that an adult insect can take because it's just impossible to imagine uh, an adult insect functioning uh, in a smaller body than that. <laughs> uh, but Dr. Huber assured me that this is the smallest known adult insect. Wow. And, uh, and so I, I believe I did mention that uh, Huber, who is an expert on uh, this group of very tiny wasps, the Mimeridae, uh, had made this assurance to me, and that it seems quite likely that this is the smallest known insect. <laughs> well, uh, here we are in 2015, and Nobody has actually challenged uh, this as being the smallest known insect. There is, uh, I, I did see somewhere uh, a paper by someone, I think it was in India or about uh, specimens from India, uh, which apparently are of about the same size as, as by Dicopomorpha, which I named, by the way, uh, as uh, or for the uh, host species, Ecpepteryx. So I called my new species Dicopomorpha ecpepterigis, ending in a uh, possessive form. Um, seems like a very long name for a very small insect, but uh, I felt that, that that was the name uh, necessary. So, are there questions?
Wow, well, it's really amazing that you're able to remember in such precise detail, like every single step of this discovery. That's just amazing. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, my goodness. It's like listening to an artist describe the process of their work. Yeah, same thing, you know. That's amazing. Um, well, so so this has never been put out into the popular culture, though. This has been something that's been kind of re staying in the field of entomology. Because, I mean, if you... No, you know, no, no, uh, <clears throat> a, a Japanese person contacted me uh, a number of years ago. Um, said that uh, they uh, they were at some museum in Japan, I've forgotten which, um, and that they had uh, read my paper, and could I possibly send them some specimens, and uh, they wanted to make an exhibit with it in hmm. their museum. Interesting. So yeah, so I did send them uh, a couple of specimens that I still had on slides. Incidentally, the types of uh, this species all went to the. No, they didn't all. Go, they, the the principal types went to the U.S. National Museum, and I also sent specimens to the uh, Canadian wow. National Museum, and also to one of the one of the insect collections in um, in California. I think it was the University of California at Riverside. Um, so they all had representatives of uh, this, uh, including the small male. Wow, that's that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. So you described his, him as looking, or it as looking, well him as looking like Mickey Mouse. That's, and then, uh, and I we don't have a copy of the paper here, but I'll try to get some scans of the photographs to use later on oh, in the yeah. in the video yeah. so that the the, sure. the, the viewer can yeah, aside think, from your very nice description but I mean you know to have some visuals um, and there's been nothing else that's been other than this you mentioned these Indian specimens there's been nothing else that's in the similar category that's that small that's it that's it yes right you can't and the but insects there, can't go any smaller there are going to be very few insects that can function at that, that small a size. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, there, there was a there was a uh, an invertebrate physiologist at, at our university who wanted to try to get some sort of an estimate on the number of cells in the body of. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but uh, he he never did manage to do it. Uh, I wish he had because it would be an interesting uh, thing to pursue. But no, it didn't happen. Well, thank you very much for this very enlightening interview, Doctor. I appreciate it very oh, much, and I'm sure that there will be many people out there that will be interested in this story. You're most welcome. Thank you.